Adam Christ for MyMMANews.com, and I am being joined by, well, I will just say he is a Muay Thai practitioner. He is a fighter out of New Jersey, training out of Weapons 9. He is John Esposito Jr. He has quite a story to tell. More than anything, we just want to help him share it here at My MMA News. He's a source of inspiration, motivation, and honestly, he just embodies the heart of a true, tried and true warrior. So without further ado, my man, John Esposito Jr., I got to meet him at uh, Freedom Fighter Promotions when I made a proper interview introduction when in the ring now i'm getting the chance to interview him so john it's my pleasure to talk to you today my man no it's my pleasure to talk to you bro thank you for giving me this opportunity um yeah so it's just been a crazy ride these last nine months man uh you know i just i went to a, i went to work one day it was a regular monday and like i you know you just you just never know what's gonna happen and um you know i work on the road I was, i'm a road worker and we were on the side of the road uh, filling in potholes. And um, it's crazy because a car came up from behind me. And um, so he like smashed into me like right next to the, it's called the reclaimer. It's like a hot box we used to keep the asshole in. And on like the edge, it has like some sharp edges. Amputation happened right on the spot. Um, so I actually like, they actually like, I'm not trying to get too graphic, I guess, but um, do you mind that or no? No, Duke, all you, it's your interview, brother. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so they actually picked my left leg up and put it onto the stretcher with me. Um, yeah, so it was completely severed. Um, and then um, was it my right leg was like kind of held together by some like skin and flesh a little bit. But yeah, like the amputation like like happened right then. Um, I blacked out immediately. The only thing I remember was like I couldn't see anything, but I heard one of my coworkers like screaming and I'm you know screaming my name. But it was like kind of like fading out you know yeah so when i first heard the story and I'm, I'm glad we're getting to talk about it now um just because i can get a better idea and you know the detail of what happened because when i heard you talk about in the um in the video sent to me uh via resilient uh, Resilient Fightwear, by the way, check them out. Some of the best Muay Thai gear you can get. Anyway, but uh, the video by Resilient, and it said the amputation on the spot. I didn't know if that had meant like the bones and, and, and ligaments, but it was actually the full on leg. It was actually taken off on the scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, like my right leg was like still attached by some like skin and flesh, yeah. but like the bone was like still like completely severed, you know? Uh, wow. So um, yeah, no, I was like losing blood like pretty quickly. Um, and uh, actually, my one coworker said, like, because uh, <laughs> I ended up falling because I like they pinned me against the machine and I ended up like slowly falling down and I fell like <laughs> flat on my face. And my coworker came over and like, you know, helped like pick my head up. And he, he actually thought I stopped breathing. But I think it was like really my body just like slowing its like heart rate down so that it wasn't like pumping as much blood out. So it was like trying to preserve itself, you know? Yeah. Um, when what time of the day was this you said it was around like uh the, the closing of the day for you but I'm, i mean with road work i i mean i know there's different shifts so what time of the day was it yeah i mean it was still like it was 1 30 um which is like starting get to get, kind of get to the end of the day but we were like filling in some like pretty big potholes that day um if i remember it correctly and um so it was like around 1 30 um and yeah it's just it literally we were like we were cleaning out the machine and everything we we're about to pack it in and um yeah, it just happened out of nowhere. And uh, next thing I know, I'm waking up in the hospital that night. Right. And and so just taking it piece by piece, you were taken out by the medevac. You were helicoptered out of the out of the site, the scene. Mm -hmm. And you actually flatlined while you were getting taken to the hospital, correct? Yeah. Wow. Um, and I, I almost feel remorseful asking this, but it, it's one of those things. Is there anything about that, like, you, that you can recall you know that might be like a remembrance a switch that might have turned you on to a, a <clears throat> anything when you when you woke up anything you can recall from that experience um i can't really recall anything like i don't actually like remember anything during that time you know right. uh, i blacked out like pretty much immediately because yeah. like the shock like just like the shock the body like you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um but um i do know that when i did wake up in the hospital um it was like something out of a movie. I uh, <laughs> I woke up and my body was in like fight or flight, and they had an oxygen tube going down like my whole, like my whole throat and everything, yeah. and I actually ended up ripping that out of my throat, and I started going crazy. And uh, I guess the nurses came over and started like like holding me down, and like oh relax relax. And then um, 
it was funny because um, actually that same night was the last night they were allowing visitors because like it was a pretty like high tension like COVID restriction at the time. Um, and they were actually uh, like not allowing visitors anymore after that night. So they actually called my uh, dad and my sisters back because they just left. So I woke up right after they just left. And luckily they didn't even leave the parking deck yet. So like they came back in and got to see me and everything. Well, that just goes to show the fighter and you wake up, you're in an awkward, you know, a little awkward situation, like get me the hell out and doing anything you can to get out. So the fighter yeah. and John Esposito. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what happened after that? Obviously your, your parents came up to see you. What was that initial conversation like? I know, I know the, the third question that you asked the doctor, which we'll get into, but again, getting to see your parents, what, what was that, all, that experience like? Um, well, um, really, it's just my uh, dad. My mom actually passed away uh, four years ago. I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good, bro. Um, so, yeah, um, but I mean, uh, so at the time, like, I was like, really, like, you know, I was really drugged up, you know. Um, so I don't exactly remember. Like, the only reason why I know I asked those questions is because my dad and my sisters were there when I was asking them. Um, but yeah, no, nah, like, literally, like, the first like the first question was you know what's going on my legs because um like i said in the interview with the uh, resilient like they had me flat because i actually had a minor fracture in my like my back but like it was so minor that they weren't really doing anything for it for me they were just kind of like they just wanted the bone to heal itself you know um so i couldn't actually see but i knew something was up in my legs because i could i could feel it you know and um that's when they told me you know like i've, I've been uh, my legs were amputated and uh the second question was will i ever be able to walk again yes in time you'll be able to walk again but it won't be the same third question was so i can't fight anymore and apparently i started actually crying when they were like you know like when i was asking that because it was like so like just i you know it's like i don't remember asking it but like it must have been so like much mentally on me at that time that like I was like, I, I can't fight anymore. Like, I can't do something I love anymore. Like, that's, that's, that's crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but really though, like, you know, after like, I can't kind of came to after like the first like few days, um, you know, like I really started to think about, um, you know, like the past, the past I have ahead of me and, you know, I, it was pretty, it was just a, such an easy decision for me, you know, like, it's like, I have this road where I can, go down this road and just feel sorry for myself and literally like just cry every day. Why me? Why me? Why me? But I didn't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to live a happy life. So like, I'm like, now nah, I'm going to learn how to adapt to this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to learn how to like modify my life and my situation to allow me to live a, a life close to where I was living before, you know? Mm -hmm. So, man, they say fighters fight. And uh, like I said, you're the true embodiment of that. And that mentality just spoke for itself. You, what are you going to do? Sit and sulk? Or are you going to sit? You're going to make the adapt adaptations and move forward. So obviously, I know, I know Muay Thai it speaks volumes for you and what your passion is. So I'm, I'm curious about why your passion is in Muay Thai. What, what is it about Muay Thai in specifics that just brings you there? Just that's your love you need to be there i mean hell after the accident is your third question about the sport in itself so why muay thai <laughs> why muay thai um <laughs> you know that's a great question actually um i just like the you know when i first got into muay thai you know it's like i i knew i just i wanted it was like something like i wanted to prove to myself you know like i wanted to see if i could do it and i just like love the the violence and just like the um the chess match of it you know what i'm saying like and, um, <laughs> and I think that, I think I like, I'm so drawn to it because it's just like, it really is like, it helps you so much in life. You know what I'm saying? Even in life in general, like, I don't think that I would have been able to mentally like handle this accident and the situation as well as I could have, if I didn't do one time, you know? Wow. So I'm, I'm grateful for that because it gave me that mindset. Like, like just like when you're in a fight camp to, you know, for a fight, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm gearing up and getting ready for the fight of life. You know what I'm saying? Like I need to work on my walking, my, you know, going up and down stairs and everything else. Like, so I could do that all in life, you know? So yeah. it's just like, I'm so grateful, you know, for Muay Thai. And um, I think that's really why I'm so drawn to it though, bro. Like it's just really like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It just correlates so, so much. It's just in general life. 
Now, when you were competing, um, did you finish your career or were you at your career pro or uh, amateur still at that level? So what ended up happening was uh, I fought pretty consistently from uh, 2014 to 2017. Hmm. And then um, I ended up, so I ended up getting burnt out in 2017. Uh, I remember like my last fight, uh, like at that time. And uh, I just like, you know, I had a lot, a lot of other stuff going on too, um, just like life situations. And I just like, I knew that I didn't, I wasn't in it all the way, you know, so I didn't really want to fight uh, anymore at that time. And actually I thought I was done, to be honest with you. I was still like, I was still going around the gyms and training, but I was more of like a nomad, you know, like I didn't really belong to any gym. Uh, but, um, you know, once I reconnected with uh, Malcolm Hill and, um, you know, Chris Tran has always been good to me, the coach and uh, the coach at Weapons 9 and uh, the owner of the Warriors Cup. Like he's always been good to me and uh, always gave me like, really great fights and I always looked for him to like give me like those fights because I knew he would give it to me and uh I uh I got like that itch again and one of the bucket list things that I didn't really get to accomplish my career was that I wanted to go pro um just to say I did you know like I was always treating the Muay Thai as, Muay Thai as like a hobby I didn't really think I was like I never really wanted to make it a career or anything like that just like but it's something fun to do you know of course and um, you know, so my game plan was I was going to come back, um, after f four years off, um, you know, do a few like tune up fights and then just go pro and then just fight really whenever I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? At that point. Um, but, uh, I had my first fight back that was in September of last year. Um, actually almost exactly a year from today's date. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, um, so I had that fight and then I was actually planning on fighting again how that fight go? Uh, so I ended up losing split decision. Um, it could know, have gone either way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I thought, you know, I, I mean, I was just excited to get back into the ring and just find the love of the sport again and just really like, just like find my passion again. You know, like I was just like, cause you know, I thought I was done, you know? And then I was like, I came back and I was just like, Oh, I like, I missed this so much, you know, like, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, like, so I had, I had a fight in December that I was supposed to do, but then I ended up getting like cellulitis on my, my right shin. Um, it was like, yeah, it was really bad. It was like, I remember like the next day after like I got it, it was like, I was wearing sweatpants and, uh, I couldn't even have like the fabric over it because it hurt so bad. So I ended up pulling out of that fight and that fight got rescheduled to January. Um, but the accident happened in December, so it never came to be, but, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I was on a roller coaster. <laughs> so, like I said, like you just said, the emotional roller coaster. I, where can you attempt, if you can, just some of the biggest hurdles that you've had to overcome, whether it be emotionally or physically, anything that you just the roller coaster that's been encompassing your life that's gone on, just anything that's been rough for you. I mean, yeah. Uh... I mean, definitely like the emotional aspect of, you know, like the roller coaster has, has definitely taken the biggest toll, um, you know, especially with like the situation now. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm still in high spirits and like everything like that. But, you know, sometimes like, you know, sometimes you, you get those moments like throughout the day. It's like, man, I really wish I had my legs back so I can like spar and, you know, like do everything I like love. And, you know, I know I'll get there back like back there eventually, but it's like I want it now, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Physically, though, it's just like, you know, um, luckily I have, you know, the prosthetics and everything. And, uh, you know, I have the best the best prosthetics out there right now. And uh, I'm grateful for that. Um, it's still like, you know, you it does. It's not like you just put them on, though, and they walk for you. You know, it's like uh, you still have to relearn how you walk. You know, like you started learning how to walk when you're a baby, you know, like you don't even think about it. Right. So you like in order to like reprogram your brain to walk another way, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's really difficult. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm starting to get it though. So I'm getting there. Making leaps and bounds and strides, man. And obviously as I've, you know, dug into the story, done my homework, I've been able to see it, man. So kudos on your end. And you've received a lot of continued support throughout the Muay Thai community, man. Getting messages from, uh, Kevin Ross, you got, you got <laughs> Nate Carnage Corbett hitting you up, you know, all your friends in the Muay Thai community. I mean, I can go on, uh, you know, gamma with Tom Cullen and I, I, again, I can go on and on and on the, the benefit you guys just had 
the the photos from Manny. I mean, just everything, the, the Muay Thai community and the combat sports community, it's just so beautiful, man. And they continue to support you. What does that mean for you? Can you put that into words? <laughs> it's very hard to put into words, man, because I'm so blown, like, I'm so blown away by, like, the amount of support I've been getting, like, never in a million years that, like, you know, I knew the Muay Thai community was strong. You know, it's not like I didn't, like, think that or anything. It's just that, like, you know, like, I'm, I was just, like, an average, like, you know, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't say no-name fighter, but, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wasn't really anybody. Um, and for everybody to give me the support, um, you know, like, I've always, like, loved the connections I made in the Muay Thai community. And I think that, like, is what's really pulling through right now because, like, you know, I made a lot of, like, connections and strong connections and friendships and everything else like that. Um, and in that aspect, like the sport really gives back, you know, like the friendships and the connections you make. Um, but like, it's so hard to, like, I, I never, if you told me that Kevin Hart and Nathan Corbett were going to like hit me up on a you know video message and like, give me a shout out, like, I wouldn't have believed you, you know, like that's, that's crazy. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, but shout out to Kevin Ross and uh, Nathan Corbett because that's awesome, uh, you know, like to, you know, give their time to me and uh, put out those video messages because they didn't have to do that. You know, they're just good people. Um, and just like, uh, was it Liam Turan, uh, Chris uh, Romulo, Sarah Romulo, Chris Tran, you know, they've all been good to me and uh, they don't have to do any of this for me. Uh, they're doing it because they're good people um, and resilient too, you know, um, they're good people, man. Uh, so I'm grateful. Uh, in words, I would just, I just, yeah, I'm just blown away. And I can't, like, I honestly can't thank everybody enough uh, that's out there, you know, just that supported me so far. It's just crazy. Well, I think it speaks volumes for the character of you as well. I, I You seem like such a nice guy, such a giving guy, like such a just outgoingly nice guy. It seems like everybody, uh, the community is going to take care of the community, especially when it's a tight wound community and you're such a nice person itself. Good is going to take care of good. Now, talking about resilient, like we said, we talked about the video and you turning the page now. I mean, keeping the bright spirits, you're keeping them high. I'm a silver lining kind of guy. And I kind of get the sense that you're that same way. You're still in the gym. I see, you know, you're still hitting pads, crushing it. And I saw you at Freedom Fighter Promotion supporting your guy, Chris Taffy and Malcolm Hill. So yeah. uh, so what's, what's it been like making those adaptations and, and keeping yourself in the gym, keeping yourself busy? Um, you know, it's been, it's been tough, uh, just cause it's like, you know, like right now, like I'm still having some like balancing issues to where like, I can't really like it, like when I'm hitting pads on my prosthetics, you know, like I can't really like let go of the walker just yet. Like, so I'm usually hitting it with one, you know, one arm and then, uh, holding it with the other, you know, like my walker and everything. Um, and then when, I, <laughs> when I hit the bag, I'm actually like, I always have to post up one, like one hand onto the bag because I need to keep myself up. But, uh, it's been hard, but like, you know, Chris uh, Romulo like really works with me. So does Chris Tran, uh, you know, when sometimes they like switch off and everything. They, they've really been working with me and trying to find like ways to like, you know, adapt and like modify the workouts so that, you know, I can do them. Uh, but uh, yeah, like, it's just like, it's been a struggle right now, but like once I get a better sense of like walking and uh, balance and everything, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully pretty soon I'll be able to like really transfer my weight into the, you know, to my legs and really act, like start to be able to pivot and I'm not just throwing arm punches, you know? <laughs> and speaking of uh, the event that we were just, we were just at some, you know, at the same time, Malcolm Hill and Chris Tapia, both capturing gold that night, your teammates. So tell me how cool that was for that, just that atmosphere, like that whole vibe weapons nine in the house representing and, you know, you guys just getting it all done as a team. What was that like for you? Bro, that was so awesome. Uh, I mean, they gave great performances, you know, like I was so, I was so happy for both of them. Um, you know, and it's just like, you know, uh, Malcolm Hill, like I've been teammates with him since the beginning, you know, like um, we used to be on the Institute together um, and like just to see his journey, like his full journey, like how far he's come, like in the world that uh, win that world uh, belt, world championship belt, like that was just crazy, you know, like um, I just, I'm so happy for both of them. And uh, I was so happy to just see them like both let go and just like, just really do their thing in the ring, bro. 
Dude, what really I, I've I've seen well both fighters compete for a long time now, but what really, really stood out to me about Malcolm's performance was he was facing an animal an animal in Felipe. And I knew that Felipe was going to just come marching forward with just blistering attacks. Malcolm didn't bat an eye. And when I say that, meaning his technique, man, he was able to be evasive. He was able to move. His technique was the sheer defining pinpoint. And I, I think is what the stamp in that fight that was what won it for him. I don't know if you'll agree with me. Everybody has a difference of opinion, but Malcolm's poise and just staying calm in that fight is what won it for him and his technique overall. And it was beautiful to see. Oh yeah, no, I definitely agree, bro. Like he's, that's always been one of his like, that like strongest, uh, you know, best like strongest suits is like just being able to stay calm and, uh, you know, critically think in the moment and uh, adapt. And, um, you know, he's, he's so used to fighting like aggressive people that like, you know, like I knew he, I knew he was going to do well in this fight. And then once, um, uh, <laughs> once Felipe threw him over the ropes, <laughs> I, I knew, you know, like I knew that like, okay, Malcolm's in his head. He has him, you know, like he's in his head. Um, so, and you know, he didn't, he didn't get mad. You know, he just stayed calm. He went back into the neutral corner and he was just like, I, you know, I know like, I don't know for sure, but I know pretty much that like he knew that he's like, all right, cool. Like I have him right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I got him second guessing, hesitating and everything, you know, that was, it was awesome. man. it was good to see for your, your entire gym and your entire team. So with the adjustments going forward, is there, is there, I mean, I, I know you, you want to get back there. Is there still that competitive drive, uh, potentially modified rules, not to speak out of turn, but have you opened, you know, a potential future book to look at some of the pages moving forward, maybe a, an act more active role in coaching. What's the future hold for John Esposito? Yeah, no, I definitely want to get, uh, more into coaching, uh, you know, once I'm back more regularly. Um, and then, um, I'm also like trying to, uh, Right now, uh, I'm, like, I'm starting to try to get the process of amputee boxing in this area um, because, you know, I want to get back in the ring you know, eventually. Um, you know, I like I feel like I just got started again, so I don't want to let it go again. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, um, right now, I, as far as I know, the only league is in Texas. And uh, as much as like I would like to visit Texas because I've never been there before, um, I don't really feel like flying out there all, all the time if I ever want to fight. So. I'm trying to get something started uh, in this area, um, you know, like the tri-state area. And uh, I think, you know, I think it's going to be a good thing because I, I just can't be the only one, like the only, you know, the only one that's like used to fight and is now an amputee and they didn't think it was possible anymore or, you know, that never got a chance to fight. And they've always been an amputee or they've been an amputee before they can even get started. And it gives them away, you know, like I can't be the only one that's, these areas are so overpopulated. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on to something, man. And uh, I mean, if nothing else, I mean, you could always reach out. I mean, see, pick somebody's brain in Texas, see what they might have to offer over here. You know friends in the promoting business, so it's not oh, like yeah. you don't have the means to get it done. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think the light bulbs are starting to churn in your head, so I like it, man. I'm going to start wrapping things up. So final thing I want to... Uh, to leave for you as far as letting the fans know where they can share to support your journey, the martial arts community, they love their own. So social media, we can help keep up with the floor is yours. My man, John. Yeah. I, um, uh, the Muay Thai project, uh, you know, they've, uh, they're a fundraiser, um, you know, nonprofit chari charity that's like hosting a, uh, GoFundMe right now. Um, so you could find the link on the, their website or, um, you could just go on their Instagram page and I'm pretty sure there's a link on there. Um, and, uh, you know, any support helps. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I definitely want to give a shout out to, uh, like I said, uh, Liam Tarrant, Chris Romulo, Sarah Romulo. Um, and if like you ever want to get in touch with me, just hit me up, you know, um, we speak about anything, you know, I'm a pretty open, open person. Um, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.